everybody. Um, so I finally got my hands on some speed paints. Um, <clears throat> so this is just going to be, you know, a totally honest review. Like I paid for these with my own money. Uh, if you notice, my review <laughs> came out way, way later than everybody else did. You know, there's, I feel like I've been waiting forever for these things to actually be on the shelves. I heard that there was production issues and distribution issues and what have you. But, um, yeah, finally got some, some speed paints and, um, there's a lot to like. Uh, yeah, um, so, and I did want to apologize for, um, I, uh, haven't done any painting content in a while. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers to the channel and it's definitely not from the Roll20 stuff that I've been doing recently because nobody's watching it. Uh, it seems like you guys are you're really into like the sci-fi stuff and I'm gonna start doing it again like that. Uh, I like it too, but you know, um, I get it. So uh, so anyways, yeah, there's there's a lot to really like about these. Um, if you if you're if you want the the too long didn't read version, um, I can put my kind of final thoughts like right here. <laughs> Basically. I'm super happy with it. It does exactly what I want it to do. It, uh, for the purpose that I'm using it for, it works perfectly. I'm not sure um, how everybody is going to try and use these things. There's going to be some winners and losers as far as colors go, but that's any paint uh, or any paint line. You know, you're going to have your favorite colors and your least favorite colors. But um, it does exactly what I want it to, so it's getting my thumbs up, getting my stamp of approval. Um, so I, I, I'm, I would definitely recommend it. Get, you know, get some good stuff. I'll put a, I'm gonna put uh, timestamps in the video. There's a, it's a, it, it's a lot longer than I intended it to be, and a lot of that is like priming and stuff like that, like how I set up my minis to do what I wanted to do with these and how they perform doing the job that I want them to do, which is kind of a niche thing. It's not, it isn't like a one and done. I don't want to just slather on a co one coat and done. Like I'm using them differently. But to give you my honest thoughts, I, I'm a big fan. There's, uh, there's a lot to like. And, and I, you know, the, the video is going to get into it, but there's a, I think it's a good buy and I recommend it. So, all right, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Hey everybody. So, uh, yeah, I finally got my hands on some speed paints, um, Army Painters new line. I feel like I've been waiting for these things to come out for a really long time. I know that there was like some production issues or some distribution issues. Um, it's like if you watch channels like mine, like bigger channels, painting channels, you've probably heard of these and you've seen some reviews already. Um, mine is obviously <laughs> going to be 100% honest because I spent my own money and uh, don't get stuff sent to me. I wish I did. <clears throat> I would love to like review paints and stuff uh, for free. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I this was the only way that I could get my hands on a set was just to like get the the giant one. Um, I had a gift certificate, birthday gift certificate that was burning a hole in my pocket though. So. Um, so, anyways, just first look, um, so, oh, that's nice, it has, um, it, it has a, uh, you know, like a, a bead or like a ball bearing or something in there, that's always nice, um, so if we look, if we compare these to, uh, contrast paints, right? 
So contrast paints, um, you can see that this one is kind of is separated, but it's going to have the, uh, the highlights, like that's going to be your lighter, lighter color, and that's going to be the darker shade. Uh, so, but it doesn't have it on the, um, on the label. Um, if you, if you get them in the store, you know, on the rack, it will have like the, the little thing with like the spectrum on it. But, um, already, you know, these seem like they're higher quality. Um, like this, these have been sitting somewhere in a, uh, you know, in a box and they have not separated like these have, and this has only been sitting for a little while. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, different colors are always going to be different, but like you can, you can see in these, um, <clears throat> let's see, let me find a good one. Yeah, like the blue, usually blues are a lot, uh, a lot less problematic than whites are. Um, it, it makes sense that this would have separated a little bit. Let's see, green. But it's gonna show like the kind of spectrum on the label. So the thing that I'm excited about is that I'm a wet palette guy. And, you know, getting this stuff out onto a wet palette is a pain in the ass. Uh, so I wanna try these on a wet palette and see what they look like. Um, <clears throat> and with a brush too, that's nice. All right, so I know what I want to paint. Um, I'm gonna get some, some minis ready. And just to give these the best chance too, I'm gonna be using my, uh, my tattoo ink mixer. Um, I have a, uh, I have a one of these. It's a, a vortex mixer where you press the uh, press the top into it, and it will mix that really well, just to give it the best possible chance. Um, these are, this is for tattoo ink. Uh, these are going to run you like fifteen twenty dollars around there, whereas the ones that are for like mixing test tubes will run you more like five hundred dollars. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to mix these really, really well before I use them, just, just so you know. All right, so um, I shook the crap out of all of these guys. Well, the, the combination of the little ball bearing or the whatever it is, glass bead that's in here, and the Vortex mixer makes these pretty easy to, to you know, really mix the paint really well. Um, so what I have is I have a bunch of my core space minis from my pile of shame. I've been meaning to paint these up for a long time. They're, um, they're just kind of like sort of generic sci-fi guys. Um, but they, um, you know, I want to color them all like completely different. So I figured that this would just be a really good, uh, really good job for for doing these guys doing um uh just kind of like random sci-fi stuff where it's like a bunch of different colors so i'm gonna go ahead and start zenithal priming these and then i'm gonna set up the wet palette because i want to see how these perform on the wet palette okay so first off um everybody's been on black and uh I'm gonna go ahead and do a mid-tone. Uh, I'm gonna do some Bully Hill Modulator Neutral Gray. And this is designed to go through the airbrush, but it's a little bit thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and thin that out a little bit. The rule of thumb that I use is um, uh, skim milk. Kind of consistency. All 
All right, so what I do is um, I just I just kind of do everybody at once. Um, I'm just gonna set up a few guys on this uh, this piece of MDF, and um, I'm gonna have them all facing in the same direction. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit them from about 45 degrees with the, with this neutral gray color. Neutral gray just means that it's gray, but it's not a cool gray. It doesn't have blue in it, or it's not a warm gray that doesn't have red in it. It's just a neutral gray. So now everybody's got those grays in there. Uh, and then that's gonna be that, that mid-tone. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do some white on them for, uh, pretty much top down. And that's gonna create those uh, natural highlights. And this isn't how you're supposed to do it, I guess. This is how I do it, because I wanna get all those natural highlights and shadows on everybody. So, I mean, like directions, as as you was you're supposed to do, is just shoot everybody with some like kind of an off white or a white prime, and then um, let the uh, let the the paints do their thing. But uh, that's not how I do mine. So, um, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to go like pretty much directly top down this time. And I would go a little bit uh, darker normally. Um, usually I want to get the full grayscale more, um, but since I'm using these, I do tend to go a little bit lighter. Um, just, I'll show you kind of what I'm, what I'm looking for here. Okay, so you can see that that, what that does is it just, uh, creates the full range of darks to lights on him so he has natural recessed dark shadows and then he has his high highlights like on the top of his head and focal points like faces and weapons and stuff like that so that's just going to create that natural range of uh of tones so that's the look that i'm going for i'm gonna do that on everybody Everybody's got a decent Zenithal Prime, and um, before I touch anybody with a paintbrush, I'm going to make sure that everybody is nice and bone dry. So I'm going to go ahead and take my dog out for a walk. But uh, but yeah, make sure when you when you're priming, don't touch it with a paintbrush until it's totally dry, because you don't want to peel up paint. Okay, so uh, it's the next day. Um, I real life got in the way, but these guys are definitely nice and bone dry. Um, so, but the the thing is, is that a lot of them look really good, but some of them, uh, the, it looks like I just watered down the the white a little bit too much. There's a little bit of pooling, and some of them don't have quite good enough highlights. So I'm just gonna dry brush. Um, but this is a good way to like kind of do that last step of highlights. Um, so I'm using P3 
um, sickly skin. And this is just, it's like kind of a little bit of an off-white, but it's a cool white. It's, uh, it kind of has like a little bit of a green to it. So I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing really quick to pick up some of those extra highlights. Um, but just kind of work in like circles, uh, sort of working top down. Like you, you might have heard of like a window shade method where you're starting at the top and then you work down with your highlights, like a, a window shade where the light is coming from but kind of like working in like circles on the top. And then as you come down, you're putting less and less paint on the figure as you get down to their feet. So I'm just gonna do that a little bit on these guys, a few of them, cause some of them need it more than others. They just need some extra highlights, but this will pick up details too. But this is like, this is how I would prepare for like my absolute best paint job. Uh, and I want to see if I can use these better than the contrast paints because I, I like to use a wet palette when I'm trying to do like my best paint job. Just if you were curious. All right. Okay. We are finally ready to do um, <laughs> some actual painting with the speed paints. Um, and I realized like that a big chunk of the video is just gonna be me like priming and doing paint prep. But so this is how I would do like my absolute best paint job. This is all the, the kind of the steps that I would go through. And like, I know it seems like a ridiculous amount of work just to prime somebody, um, but it's like to do my absolute best paint job, this is how I would do it. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pick maybe one of my favorite characters or one of my favorite minis out of this bunch and then go to work on them. Yeah, I like this one. All right, so um, the way I handle the, the contrast paints and the, um, uh, like I'm gonna handle these the same way, it's more, more like watercolor than um, acrylic or oils. So like acrylic and oils, you would work from dark to light. You would put your your uh, lightest colors on last and then you would uh, put your, um, your, yeah, darkest colors on first, lightest colors on last. But because, um, because these things sort of behave more like watercolors, like you actually want to go light to dark. Um, there's some there's some science behind that um, because it's an additive process. Let's try this flesh tone. And I'm mostly interested in seeing how these actually look compared to you know what the, it says on the label. These these look really good in the jar. Um, okay, so, but this will be one of my lighter tones. It's going to be my flesh tones, right? So, already that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that's doing what I want it to, which is just, I want to just glaze color on top of the, um, my priming and I want to keep my highlights and shadows the way they are from my priming and because these guys have a lot of detail on them it's nice that you can set up a wet palette and then just have a have a palette to work from uh, and then put you know a little dot down and then like I feel like you use less paint that way it's less you know you don't tip anything over um, it's like the dropper bottles are not designed to fail and dry out the way that alligator lids are. 
So already this feels way better. Um, just giving you my honest opinion. So yeah, this is a little dark, this color though. So maybe not my favorite color, but if I push it around and make sure that it doesn't pull, it, uh, it looks like a decent flesh tone. Usually my problem with um, army painter stuff is the glossiness. I feel like they sometimes they have a glossiness problem. So here's what I'm talking about with going light to dark. So you see that I've got a little bit of, uh, I kind of spilled a little bit here, like on this little pouch. So if I make that little pouch like a dark leather or like black or something, you know, that's not going to show up. So that's one of the reasons why I want to work from light to dark. If that makes sense. So I'm just going to make sure I don't get any pulling where I don't want it. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Feels really good though. Definitely feels good. Um, what color? I think... I'm going to try this purple. I like that, you know, I just put a dot down. I don't have to constantly be going into pots, you know, opening them up, like knocking them over, all that. That gets pretty old pretty fast. Um, oh, I need to brush this contaminated. Clean out that color. Okay. It's purple pants. Ooh, that's, a, that's a nice, that's a nice purple. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go around on this mini and I'm gonna do some base coats. Um, and like at this point, I'm actually mostly just looking to get some nice shadows in. I want some, uh, like a mid, uh, I want mid-tones and then I want shadows. And that's really all I want these to do. And like, this is, I don't expect this to be like a one and done kind of thing. If it is, you know, that's fine. Um, but that's not really what I want these for. I want to get shadows and midtones, and then I want to come back in and I want to fix my highlights later. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to put some colors down. You don't need to watch me do all this. And then we can kind of come back to it. I'll give you my thoughts. All right, so already, um, you know, I have, there's, I feel like there's some winners and losers and I've only used a few colors, like the, the yellow, this is a yellow that's on her hair, hair and I feel like it's way too orange. Um, the flesh tone, flesh tones are just always problematic for me, I feel like, um, but you know, like if that's something that I would spend the extra time on is cleaning up, uh, faces and you know hands that like flesh <laughs> the leather i like um this is still drying so it's a little bit you know glossy still but so far i'm not seeing the glossiness that i feel like is a problem with a lot of army painter stuff um so these behave really well i like that i can i can push them around um like I, they, they don't, um, they have really good coverage, meaning that they cover evenly and then they run into the recesses, uh, you, they, they behave how I want them to for like a contrast paint or a densely pigmented wash or whatever, uh, where they're running over the surface evenly and they're getting even coverage, nothing is splotchy looking, like coffee stain looking. Um, it's just, it's, it's doing what I want it to, if that makes sense. So now, you know, like I've got my, my midtones and shadows in there. So now, um, you know, that's just one and done with the Xenothal Prime and then using a, uh, using a wet palette, right? That's perfect. That's, I mean, that's what I want these to do. This is a good buy for me. Like this is, this is doing exactly what I want it to do. Um, and now I'm 
gonna come in and I'm gonna uh, do some more details. Um, so I'm gonna come in with some model color, uh, Vallejo model color, which is a much more opaque kind of color. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of wet blending, a little bit of glazing with that uh, to kind of clean up my flesh tones a little bit. So I'm just gonna glaze that over uh, in my highlights. But yeah, I mean, this is this is exactly what I want this stuff to do. So I'm happy. I feel like it's a good buy. Um, And then, like, okay, if I can show you, like, the paint bot, um, the, uh, like, the really opaque color version. It's kind of like, a, like, if I use this uh, Men Off white base, this is going to be really opaque. Uh, if I don't want to glaze, then I can, I, I want a wet blend. I can do my highlights with something more like this. Kind of clean up all those highlights and kind of feather that out, like do some two brush blending. Oops. So I'm putting down opaque paint Right, and then I'm feathering it out, smoothing it out, pushing it where I want it to be. That's what that's what two brush blending is. It's sort of like dry brushing or like edge highlighting, but you're just feathering the paint out, you're smoothing it out, but you can wet blend with it too. Okay, show you a little bit of um, wet blending with the uh, with the the speed paints. So okay, I've got an opaque color here on my wet palette, and then I can take the uh, the you know the original color, the speed paint color, and then I can blend that in with that highlight. Uh, of the opaque color and then kind of glaze it back on um, do, uh, do highlights with that and kind of blend that together a little bit to pick up those highlights and push around the speed paints to uh, get them where I want them or push push the the highlights where I want them so it looks like you can absolutely just put it on the wet palette and wet blend with it you know with your opaque colors no problem so this is still a little bit wet here so I'm just doing uh just gonna do some like edge highlighting wet blending stuff brush blending. Pick up some highlights. Because like I said, mostly what I want these to do is just get those mid-tones and shadows and then I can come back in and do details, highlights and stuff later. But I really like that I can wet blend with these. That's really nice. So far, these are getting an A plus for me, or A minus at least. Some of them. Uh, 
Okay, so um, I'm using a combination of different paints. I'm using different techniques. Um, I'm using opaque paints. I'm using the um, the army painter stuff as a glaze. I'm using it as a you know a wash. Like basically, I'm super happy with it. It does exactly what I want it to do. It uh, for the purpose that I'm using it for. It works perfectly. I'm not sure um, how everybody is going to try and use these things. There's going to be some winners and losers as far as colors go, but that's any paint uh, or any paint line. You know, you're going to have your favorite colors and your least favorite colors, but um, it does exactly what I want it to. So it's getting my thumbs up, getting my stamp of approval. Um, so I, I, um, I would definitely recommend it. Get, you know, get some good stuff if you want my honest opinion. So, anyways, yeah, I think that's gonna be it for now, you guys. Um, uh, yeah, take care of yourselves until next time I see you. Peace.